Hi everyone, it's Matt from the Pen Habit, and I'm back for another video, another review. Now, this review is, I'm going to admit it right up front, a little unfair because it's for a pen that you pretty much can't get anymore, at least not the exact version that I've got. But that's okay because there are other versions of the pen that are very similar, so hopefully this will be helpful for you in that respect. So today's pen is going to be the Delta Unica. So this is a, a lower end pen from the Delta line, Delta being an Italian manufacturer. Um, and I have talked ad nauseum about my love for Italian pens. Uh, this is the first Delta I have owned though, and uh, pretty good first experience, I have to admit. So uh, quick look at the box. It's uh, black cardboard with a kind of glossy black Delta logo on the top, and you open it up, and inside you have the uh, faux snakeskin box. Open that up, and inside a Delta brochure, a little cleaning cloth, a little microfiber cleaning cloth, a converter, and a cartridge. So those are, then the cartridge is in the pen, the converter comes outside. Uh, obviously, I've used the pen already, so I don't have it in the box at the moment. This is the pen in question. This is the Delta Unica. Now, uh, the Goulet Pen Company here in the U.S. had a, an exclusive with Delta for this particular version of the Unica. This is made out of the out of orange celluloid, and celluloid is. A, a material that was used quite a bit in earlier years of pen manufacture. It's fairly uncommon these days, and when you do find it, it's pretty expensive. The pen was $80, and that is a steal for a celluloid pen, a true celluloid pen. Um, it, unfortunately, is no longer available. The Unica still is available, and you can get it in other colors, or will be able to get it in other colors. But this orange celluloid, which is the same orange celluloid that they use for their Dolce Vita pens and some of their other really high-end pens, uh, they just could not keep up with the demand for this. And, uh, and, and the celluloid, according to Brian Goulet, the celluloid manufacturing process is so, so time-intensive and so expensive that it just didn't make sense for them to continue making more of these uh, from from a manufacturing perspective. So, uh, I feel very fortunate that I happened to get one before they ran out. So talk through it, it's a flat-topped pen, it flares up slightly as you go from the end up to the top, and it's slightly rounded here on the top. Gold-colored appointments, nice, and it has a nice little roller ball here on the, the clip. The clip is nice and firm, but not too much so has the Delta Italy inscribed right here on the cap, metal ring here around the barrel, and uh, and then, you know, as I mentioned, flat bottom here. Really pretty material. This orange celluloid is a pretty material, but like I said early in the video, I'm not going to talk too much about the material other than what I've already said because you can't really get this material anymore. So, uh, let us open up the nib. There's another neat little thing about this pen, and this pen has a brushed gold uh, colored nib. So it's a steel nib with a brushed gold finish, and it's really quite a beautiful uh, finish. I wish more manufacturers would do this brushed gold look because I like it quite a bit. Very nice deep embossing on the nib with the Delta logo, and I got my uh, beloved medium. The feed is your kind of generic plastic feed on the bottom, nothing too special there. The pen fits very nicely in the hand, although the grip is a little wide, and I'll get to the measurements in just a second. And uh, it is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, it comes with a cartridge, but or a converter in the package, which I showed you earlier, but uh, I like the slightly higher quality converters, so I swapped out the converter it came with for one of these slightly nicer ones. Uh, in terms of the, the build quality of the pen, this is a very, very nice pen. I really can't think of any other pens in the $80 uh, price range that feel as solidly built as this, with maybe the possible exception of Twisby. 
And that's a big maybe. Uh, I like this pen a lot more than I like any of the Twisbees I have. And I like the Twisbees, but I really do like the Unica. And it feels just very solidly built. The, the threads are very smoothly machined. It's polished to a perfect sheen. And the celluloid is, this is not an inject, injection molded uh, pen like the Twisbees are. This is a turned pen. So to get this level of quality in construction from a turned pen for $80, that's, you don't find a lot of those out there. And I'm a big fan of this, frankly. Uh, in terms of measurements, so let me pull out my sheet here. We are looking at lengthwise, you've got 132.6 millimeters. So it's a decent size pen. It's not too terribly long, not too terribly short. It is a very comfortable 122 millimeters when uncapped. And you can see in my medium sized hands, it if I were to extend my fingers, it would be just a little on the short side, but it's pretty comfortable for me to use unposted. Uh, posted, which it can be, it posts at 152, which I still consider a fairly reasonable length. And you'll notice here that um, it's just very, very nicely balanced in the hand. It, it really does feel quite good. Uh, the grip, and this is where the things might fall apart for some people and where I happen to really like it. The grip of the pen right here is about 11.8 millimeters. So it's a fairly wide grip, uh, more along the lines of a, a Pelican M805, for instance, or something along those lines. So it's going to be a wider grip. So if you like a narrower grip, this one may not be the best option for you. Uh, I find that I... I will sometimes hold it on the threads, but not often. The threads are not sharp and don't get in the way at all, so that's nice. Um, very well balanced when it's posted, and uh, the barrel is 13 and a half millimeters right here, and the widest part of the cap, which is up here, is 15 and a half millimeters. So it's a decently wide pen. It's a it's a good size pen. It is a little. Usually, pens of this width tend to be a little longer. Uh, it, it doesn't bother me though. Um, the, the fact that it's just a little on the stubby side, and I mean just, just barely a little on the stubby side, really doesn't bother me. In terms of weight, it's, it's a very lightweight pen. Uh, celluloid is not a heavy material. So it's only 16 grams uncapped, and you can add an additional eight to that to get 24 grams capped or posted. Uh, so do I like the pen? A whole bunch. I love the material. And neat little tidbit uh, I learned just recently, uh, which is always a good reminder that for those of you who are watching and think that I'm some know-all guru of fountain pens, first of all, you, I'm not. Uh, I learn new things all the time. Um, and I've only been doing the fountain pen thing for about two years. Uh, so I still learn a lot of new things. Way you can tell if something is celluloid is take the cap and take a sniff of it. And if it smells like camphor, uh, kind of like Vicks VapoRub, then chances are you've got valid celluloid. Now, several videos ago, I posted a review of a Kaigaloo 316, which is a Chinese-made pen that I bought, and the eBay listing said it was celluloid. It wasn't. It was acrylic, but um, because celluloid at, at that the $22 that I paid for the pen, I didn't realize that at the time, but that wasn't realistic. So... Um, if you ever want to know if something is celluloid, you can take a sniff. If you get that camphor smell, that kind of Vicks VapoRub smell, you'll you'll know it's it's actually celluloid. Either that or someone treated the inside of the cap with Vicks VapoRub. All right, so I like the pen. It fits very nicely in my hand, and I was surprised at how well it wrote. Uh, it was very, very nicely uh, smooth not over smooth, the nib wasn't, and uh, so why don't, instead of me talking about it, why don't I actually do a writing sample and show you how I, show you how I like the pen. All right, the pen for today is the Delta Unica with a medium steel nib. The ink in question is one of my favorites. It's Red Dragon by Diamine, English made ink, and the paper is a Rhodia dot pad. So uh, I don't know if you can see 
just the the reflection. This is uh, it starts with a very wet line. You can see it on the word delta there. Very very wet line. Now I did just ink this pen up, so it will get a little less wet over time because there's still quite a bit of ink in the feed. Um, this pen does suffer from mild ink starvation, um, which is which is unfortunate. Now. I'm not using the included converter, but this is supposed to be standard international, so it shouldn't matter which converter I'm using. But in long writing sessions, this pen, it will never choke on me entirely, but it will get unpleasantly dry as I go on. So every now and again, I will, if I'm doing a long writing session, you know, maybe every two, two and a half pages, I'll open the pen and prime it just a little bit. I wish that wasn't the case, but on this pen, I'm willing to put up with it because the pen itself writes so beautifully. So the quote for today is, oh, excuse me. All right. So, uh, as I mentioned, this nib is really smooth. And I have to say, it is one of the wetter and one of the smoothest out of the box writing experiences I've ever had, which I adore, um, especially for a pen that's $80. You know, the nibs from Twisby, uh, who Yovo makes Twisby's nibs. And I, I keep referring to Twisby because they're one of the only other pens in this $80 price range that I'm super familiar with. But they tend to run, Twisby's nibs to me tend to run a little dry. They're usually smooth and occasionally over smooth, but they tend to run a little on the dry side. This pen for me has been beautifully juicy and I just really, really like it. So you can see here, um, if I do just a little bit, there's, there's, there's a fair bit of ink in there. Um, and it's, I mean, if I go up here, there's still a little, it's still a little wet from up there. Uh, in terms of smoothness, I mean, I'm just barely touching the pen to the paper and it just really floats across. You can even, I'll move a little closer to the microphone here. Uh, there's just very little in the way of scratchiness. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but um, it's, it's a nice, really nice steel nib. One of the nicer steel, steel nibs I have ever used. I'd say it's kind of on par with the nibs I have gotten from Franklin Christoph. Uh, the reverse writing, dry, but very smooth, even upside down, which is not common. Um, so if you need an extra fine line and you're out one day, there's the reverse writing for you. In terms of line variation, there's not much. Um, Again, not surprising. This uh, this pen, it's a steel nib. It's not was not designed to spring or flex, and so you can coax a little ink out, a little more ink out of it, but you're not going to coax much in the way of line width. I love this pen. I love it. The only real complaint I have is the ink starvation issue, which is something I'm starting to notice more and more. Um, when I, because it's an issue I very, very rarely come across in my higher end pens. Um, in my lower end pens, I see it a lot more often. Um, I think, and I'm about to eat crow here, but I think that is ink starvation does tend to be more of a problem among pens that use the standard international converters and cartridges. Um, and I think what the problem is, is that the design of the opening of the Standard International just is not wide enough to allow air back into the feed quickly. Um, so I think that may be part of why there's that whole ink starvation issue. I'm just guessing, but that is my thing. Despite the, and, and in this case it is very minor, despite the minor ink starvation, this is a stunning pen made out of a beautiful material that writes like a dream. 
And I will say that even though I've never used another Delta pen before, this has caused me to want to get one. So I think one of my next big pen purchases is going to be a high-end Delta pen, a Dolce Vita in, again, with this beautiful orange celluloid or something else. Uh, Delta, I'm not super familiar with their materials, but I like what I have seen so far. So that's been my review of the Delta Unica. As I mentioned, mine was available for a limited time from Goulet Pen Company, but there are other versions of the Unica that either are available or will be available out of different materials. It's a great pen. I really, really highly recommend it. So if you have any questions, head over to penhabit.com and join the conversation over there. Or you can ask on Twitter, Facebook, the social medias, etc. So we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Hi-ho, Kermit the Frog here.